Hello all, this is a chic intro meeting. Some participants uh, have not joined yet, and as usual, we will leave them five more minutes to join the call. In the meantime, happy new year to all. Hello, Alex. Hello, hello. Hello, Pascal, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. I, ha I had some troubles logging in, but, uh, but it's good that we're here. Good to hear you. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> yes. and happy New Year to everybody who joined. I think Laurent is not with us yet. Oh, he is. Sorry. Hello, Laurent. Laurent, if you are speaking, your voice is very, very low. Is it better? Oh, it's fabulous. Oh. Okay. And I see Anna is joining. Carla is there. Dominique, Eric. Uh, Dominique. Okay, here. Salut. 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 I want Dominique. to talk with you, Dominique. <laughs> yeah, I, you miss I, me. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Dominique. We are very, hello, hello. We are very, very happy to have you here. <laughs> yeah. I was upset. <laughs> well, I answered your call. I, I proposed to meet the next day. That was uh, Tuesday last week. I and didn't get it. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. And so Dominique was very upset with you, Laurent, now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hello everyone. Happy New Year. Hello, Sergio. Hello, Eric.
Okay, so I guess it's time to start. So this is uh, uh, the Shalit trim uh, of the Sheikh Working Group. Um, Alex, I passed you the slides, so if you can move to the next. Okay, uh, so as usual, the, the ATF not well policy applies. So if you're uh, aware of uh, misconducts, uh, harassment, etc., please notify uh, the chairs or the ombudsman. Uh, same thing if you're uh, aware of uh, IPR that is not disclosed in any of the discussions during this meeting, please uh, announce the IPR or let the chair no chairs know. Next slide, please. And um, so today the, the, the meeting will be focusing uh, for the most piece on OAM and uh, Alexander will also present how we can use uh, fragmentation to increase the, the reliability for Shik uh, Next slide, please. Okay, and uh, so we have uh, adopted two, two documents which are now published as draft IETF. Uh, which is uh, the Chic Access Control and the 8824. Uh, the Laurent, by the way, the Chic Access Control, you did not update the uh, the replacement, so I did it for you. Okay, thank you. And uh, then there is the, uh, the, the the two new documents for which uh, Alexander has uh, published um, a request for uh, adoption. And so please uh, go to the mailing list and, and check whether you want to, to support the adoption of those two documents. Uh, so one of them is the OAM draft, which will be discussed today. And the other one is the IP protocol number, which started in Interia, but will progress in Czech. So we are looking for an adoption by this working group. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so um, we, we've got this, this new milestone for the uh, draft Moscovich uh, IP number and for the OAM, which are by, well, it's a replacement actually. Um, maybe the date we have to, to reconsider them. So uh, Laurent, Laurent, by the way, for the OAM, would you have any suggestion for a, a, a good date? Uh, for what, for? For, for uh, be, being ready for our publication to the ISG. Uh, it, did, it doesn't depend on me, it depends on the group now. <laughs> if you but agree yes, or you... not to do the work. <laughs> I, I'm asking you a recommendation, like do you think uh, there is a lot to be done uh, in this document or do you think it's, it's... It's mostly if we keep the document that is current content or if we want to have more. Because OAM is a very, very wide uh, subject and we are not doing any sort of Oh, yeah, and it's very focused. So, if we keep it focused to uh, what it is, I will discuss that in the presentation and also the the new thing we introduced. But after that, there could be discussion about uh, does it have to stay in this document or or not. For me, it's better to put everything together because it will go faster. But uh, that's uh, to the group to decide. Okay, so, so let's have this discussion during your presentation. Uh, tuck, 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 tuck. But but mm -hmm. can, if we indicate something like 2025 as a rule of a thumb, end of 2025, that looks good. 2025, I think, uh, I hope it will be, normally uh, we, we have everything, we have no unsolved questions. It's, so oh, it's... that's why I'm asking, right? So, so at least by changing, you're mm -hmm. starting to get an answer. Um, so no, I, I say, uh, let's say before uh, Vancouver. For publication, oh, that's aggressive now. Vancouver <laughs> is is full. Six months. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we we, we can note that. Um, and next slide, please, Alex. Uh, okay. So I, I'll I'll let you speak that one, Alexander, because you're the one handling the interims. Yes. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Pascal. Well, here the point is: um, Do we request a meeting at the ITF uh, in in uh, in Australia? Um, and one of the things, of course, is um, uh, so personally, I am not going to go for 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 several reasons. But you know, I'm not going to go into details, so I'm not going to be present. 
Uh, I think Laurent is not going to be present. Pascal is not going to be present. Uh, and and uh, I, I mean, at some point, um, the question is: Do we organize a meeting in 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 this kind of uh, uh, setup, or do we just keep the interims? Um, and uh, here, of course, we need to keep our rhythm. So keep a good rhythm. Uh, as you saw on the, on the previous slide, we have a lot of milestones which are falling in 2024. Uh, probably we're not going to be able to uh, to follow them all, but at least that we you know we uh, we advance on, on these topics. Uh, and I, I see a lot of positive energy and, and a lot of interest. But uh, you know I, I, we will try to 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 keep the good uh, tempo here. Um, so. Um, I would, the first thing I will ask is Eric, how does it, if he has an advice on that? The yes. only thing is maybe too early for Brisbane. This is for the IP number IP protocol for Chic, where mm -hmm. getting somebody presenting an in interior uh, just for information, right? Could be nice, but it's too early in the process. So I think it would be more for Vancouver in July. Okay, so so for yeah. for for you, it won't, we will not be very penalized if, if we don't have a meeting at this ITF. No, right. You mm. will not be the. I mean, some of our working group are meeting once, meeting out of two, or something like that. So there is no point of making a meeting if you have only one document to be discussed, which is basically or two, while the mm. interims are doing well. Now, uh, let's try to meet either in Vancouver or in Dublin, though. Right. Oh yes, yes, it's yes, important. of course. Yes, yes, perfectly agreed with this. Right. So, and and, I mean, one of one of the points is that most of the people I see here are, are in time zones that are not in the same time zone as in Australia. And if everyone is, if, if, if very few people are going, then like waking up everyone in three in the morning to to have a virtual meeting, it 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 would not be probably the wisest thing. Um. So. Yes, yes, Eric. And if you decide not to meet, uh, mm -hmm. just be sure to indicate it into the tool so we know, right? So I will not be able to chase you for for days. Yes. Hey, what yes. are you doing? What are deciding finally? Right. Oh, yeah, yes. Well, okay. Good, good point. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Um, so um, let's say that by default we are not going to be meeting. So, I mean, um, unless, of course, you can you can send uh, uh, an email to me and or pass, like to to the, to the chairs and, and to Eric if like okay we I want to go there. Uh, I'm I'm going to send a mail after this uh, meeting to the to the mailing list just to say hey well we, we we are considering not 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 meeting at this ITF. Well, just so that everyone is uh, uh, is in page with this, um, and um, and that's it. Okay, so with this, uh, we have uh, uh, finished the, 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 the administrative part. So let me see. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. How do I? Okay, I need to stop this one, I think. Hello? Um, okay. Share this one. Okay. So, um, Laurent, uh, the, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you. So, I will talk about uh, AOM and I would like to have a, a good discussion on, on this draft because it's uh, here for a long time and I think now it's. Uh, it's ready to be published, but there is some adjustment to to do on it. So it's a work we, we have done with many of her, but uh, the main one are Dominique and, and I. Uh, so I cannot go to the next uh, slide. So next slide, please. OK, so uh, what we have in, in, in this document, it's in fact, we have three things concerning, uh, so we call AOM, but maybe it's, we have to narrow it. But one thing is about uh, ICMPv6 protocol compression. 
So we things that are specified in the, in uh, RFC 4043. So it cover mainly error messages and, and ping. So in the document, it's uh, what is in blue. So it's uh, uh, paragraph 4.1 and an example in paragraph 4.2. We have another thing that is the gener generation of ICM PV6 message by Chic to indicate some errors. So this is a paragraph uh, 4.4. And then we have optimization that can be done on very constrained network like LP1 networks. And this optimization concerns two things. The first one is to have a global action. So what we call also proxy. Uh, and it means that instead of sending things on the uh, constraint network, we just process things inside the, the core. And we introduce also new matching operator and CDA to compress payload that is inside uh, ACMP messages. So next slide. So, okay, so the problem is not, uh, the error is not good, but in fact, if you look, uh, and I think the best way to summarize things is to go to the young data model, and we have different type of identifier. So the one in blue are the one that concern the ICMPv6 compression. So it's the introduction of new types that will be, uh, or new field ID that will be used to uh, describe the, the field that you find in IPv6, ICMPv6, sorry. So you have the, all the fields that are present in VRFC and something that is new and original in this uh, document is that we consider also the payload as a field that can be processed. And it's uh, mainly because ICMP is a kind of stop protocol. It means that uh, you cannot encapsulate another protocol on it. Uh, you just have some types and, and some codes. So this can be useful, for example, to do a reverse compression uh, when needed to go on a constraint network. Uh, so after, and in blue, and in green, sorry, it's what we have introduced for the new rules that we have a matching operator and uh, CDA that have been introduced to test, for example, if a rule exists uh, in the payload or we can find a rule in the payload, how we do the compression of the payload. And on the next slide, it's clearer. Uh, that's the augmentation of the young data model. And in fact, what we, we do, we introduce a proxy behavior and this proxy behavior can have also some parameters. So that's the slight modification to the uh, rule and the young data model of the rule. So right now we call it uh, proxy, uh, but maybe it will be better just to say that it's an action. And I like a lot this uh, term of action because we have the compression, decompression action that are applied to a specific field. And here it can be viewed as a generic action that you apply, we apply to the full, uh, full packets. And this action in the new draft has been uh, designed to say, okay, you can process this thing and that's all. So for example, it's a case to reply to, to a ping. So the ping arrives to the core and the core answer on the behalf of the device. Or you can say, I process this action and then I send the packet to, to the device. So it's uh, the two behavior are allowed now in, in the document. Okay, next slide, please. And so uh, the, group, the question I had to the group, so the first one is to see if we uh, can so put IETF uh, in, in, in the name. So it has started this morning, so that's good. So to have a working group adoption. And the second thing that we have to discuss is do we keep AOM or do we do to ICMP processing for chic or something like this? So that's all, if you have questions or remarks. 
Um, thank you. Uh... Uh, thank you very much, um, Laurent. So a couple of, uh, uh, one short question, and Eric also posted a question in the chat. Um, so the my, my question would be uh, related, if you remember at some point, Suresh was like very long time ago, was talking about some ideas in adding new things to the ICMP codes, where you could have this kind of a proxy, like uh, action, or I don't know how to call it. Uh, you know, to say, okay, the device is to, to answer on behalf of the device. Um, so do you think that there is something to do in that direction or that's like later on with the document that we should do? Uh, for me, if we start uh, playing with ICMP codes or types, it will be much more difficult to, to adopt because it's, uh, you, you have to change things on, on another group, so it's not so... So easy. So, um, and I, for what is, what covers the draft right now, I don't think it's uh, it's really needed. So maybe we can have some something like a rule is missing or thing. So to tell that we the chic machine fails. So that's a possibility. On another end, maybe it's also some security issue because you say to to the rest of the world, look, I am on a constraint network. Hmm. Uh, 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 okay, yes. Okay, that, that's a good point, yes. Um, okay, and then, so Eric, he asked the question, um, oh, it, indeed, proxy does not sound too good. What about ICMP proxy? Yeah, hmm. less, less generic. Yes, so uh, if you come back to the previous slides, uh, here it's what we have in a young data model. So we have something that is proxy behavior and proxy behavior values. So here for me, maybe it will be more to put action or action behavior and uh, action uh, behavior value uh, instead of proxy because it, it's more generic than, than a proxy right now. And if you come back to the previous slide uh, here, you you have uh, in the light green, you have the different proxy behavior or action we have now. So we can keep proxy ping in that case, because it's really, we are doing a proxy ping, but uh, the proxy none can be non action, action none or something like this. So just to keep proxy for the, uh, the behavior that is really related to, to ping, and the rest is more generic. And, and maybe another suggestion on the last slide, Laurent, you were asking, what's in the name? Is it OIM or ICMPv6 into the, the, the file name? As you are focusing mainly on ICMPv6, I would suggest to put ICMP6 only mm. and keep OIM for a broader, maybe later. Right. Yeah, that's a suggestion. We got it yet, of course, right? Yeah. No, yes, that's right. We with Dominic, we we focus more on ICMPv6. So. Yes, and, and this is related to the question I had as well. I mean, when I said the YM is very very wide, that that's what I I meant, Laurent. So I agree mm -hmm. with with Eric. Um, yeah, I have. Uh, a few questions. Um, it, even though my name is on the draft, uh, I, uh, mostly Laurent wrote the latest version, to be honest. Uh, so he was kind enough to put me as a an author of the, of the presentation, but uh, I'm more part of the audience now. Um, so um, I understand the, the the core of the document now is uh, compressing ICMPv6 headers uh, and the, the payload uh, coming back from error messages. Uh, the other thing which is very, very different is the proxy thing. And so since LP1, since the working group is kind of moving away or generalizing from LP1 into uh, other networks, I'm curious to hear what experts think of the proxy behavior. Can we I mean, can we mimic or are we reusing or can we reduce uh, regular proxy mechanisms so that we don't reinvent something? Is that something that would be possible? 
So for me, and it's something we, we did not develop right now, but proxy can be a way also to take care of uh, keep alive messages. For example, you have an application that sends from time to time, are you alive? And so the behavior that we describe in for ping is to say that if you see some traffic during this past period, then you answer. If you don't see any traffic, you don't answer. So that can be extended to, I don't know, uh, for example, MQTT, where you have a lot of uh, uh, keep alive, then you you avoid to send them on the uh, on the constraint link. So that's right. one, uh, one behavior of uh, this action. Another behavior is that if you want to start an extra processing of your rules before sending a packet, for example, to record things, to uh, to keep some context or, or thing like this. This can be done by this uh, proxy, and that's why I think action is more appropriate right now. Um, I hear that. Um, would the uh, answer on behalf of the end device be possible using existing proxy mechanisms? Do we need to reinvent a new one? Sorry? Uh, you described the, the proxy behavior, uh, hmm. which I, I understand. Um, I'm, I'm just asking because we're, we're trying to generalize check into other networks than I, NP1. Can we, I mean, can we reuse existing proxy mechanism? Would an existing proxy be able to do that for us without having to redefine something new? Uh, I think. It, Yes, we need because it's more rate for first in the ping proxy one important information is that I receive already some chic traffic from this device before. Mm -hmm. So it's something that is only known by the by chic and not by things outside. So that's uh, one answer. And the other answer is that it can be used to manipulate the rule uh during um, uh, uh, during the chic life so it means that at this time when i have this and this events or i select this rule so i can trigger a special processing inside the the chic instance so here is not totally clear what we uh, we have to specify but that's some uh, ideas that we we can have to generalize it uh, another point is that it's not mandatory. It's something that is an augmentation of the uh, current chic. And if you go back to the uh, the previous slide, uh, Alex, if you can, yes. So here in the document, uh, maybe we can we can uh, make it clear. But the 4.1 is the ICMP compression that can be applied on any kind of uh, network. So the blue one is something that is very generic. And then the green uh, part is something that is dedicated to constraint networks. So the document has these two, uh, uh, these two specifications. So you can do something generic that is fast and, and you can do something more optimal for this kind of networks. So just maybe one question. Um, so um, what Dominic is saying, and and that that's also a question to Dominic. Can for Dominic, can we say that there is like a generic action mechanism, uh, and and then we say, well, there is this action that is like proxying, and it's it's as Dominic says, like it's invoking an external action that may be implemented in ways that are already existing, right? But uh, and then we go and specify, well, there is the action of ICMP processing, um, uh, proxying of ICMP proxying. Uh, so in a way, we don't say something specific to the to the answering on behalf of someone, but we can provide a way to to do that. Um, I'm not sure if that was clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I I heard you were asking me uh, part, at least part. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, the the general action, uh, you know, it's kind of opening a Pandora box to me. 
uh, like you can do anything uh, it could have state and so it's no longer stateless well it's it's getting very you know opening anything can happen and uh, to me it's hard to understand maybe it's because i'm not devoting enough time to that topic right now but it seems to me we, i see the, the the value of you know the, the fine optimization i can do this i can club of that and i can uh, do a little thing on the side but is that does it have a generic model in, in 10 years from now will we be able to understand why we are doing mm. that and how it works and everything that's my question mm. yes you understand so another point is that anas has issue uh, a draft on uh, on flows and action can be useful for for that but we we have to discuss so for me yes we don't have to open it widely right now because we have to take care about uh, about this but it's a way to uh, to make more things with chic so it's something we, we, we have to investigate. So, uh, yes, I think, I mean, that, that's an excellent point. And um, so there is a content, maybe if you can ask the, the, the question, but probably we need to, okay, let uh, content and after you we can move to the next presentation, which is me. So I will let Pascal uh, chair the, uh, at the end of the presentation or and and on the floor. Okay, so um, do you want me to load the slides now? And Quentin, no? Uh, you know, but there's also a Quentin. So Quentin, you can, I think you can go ahead. And... Uh, I, I just, just wanted to say Quentin. that uh, it seems that the action mechanism uh, can be expanded to do a lot of things, uh, which seems to not only serve the case of ICMPv6, but pretty much like uh, a lot of different scenarios. Uh, shouldn't that be kind of like a document on, uh, like a separate document, uh, something that we can take time to investigate? Because to me, it seems that the part uh, about compressing ICMPv6 is, is pretty mature. This is something that should be moving on. I mean, like going through the uh, IETF working group, and maybe should we take a, a bit more time on the action part? And that's it. That, that's that's one way of looking at it. Quentin, another way of of looking at it is we define some actions here, and if the mechanism appears uh, successful and people like it, then uh, we can make more in a new document. I mean, that's another way of looking at it. I mean, I understand what you're mm -hmm. saying, but it looks to me that it's a bit uh, greedy because we we never see the end because it can be anything, as you say. Uh, so, so doing one as an example, which is the case of uh, proxy quote unquote uh, operation for a low power device, uh, that's that's already a, a start. And and if, as you say, it can be used for many things, then we can have other documents in the future. It's probably more specific into what we want to achieve. So let's discuss. I think it's uh, a good point. Uh, we have to see how we organize things, but uh, in any way, if, if we do what Quentin says, has, it has to be put in the architecture document to, to describe this. I agree on the uh, architecture. I mean, if we have this new capability, it, it needs to be in the architecture. Uh, I'm just concerned to to create a separate document which will be open uh, ended in its uh, coverage. Here, at least, we have a limited coverage, and and that allows to to say, okay, we can have a target date. We know what kind of content we're looking for, etc. So, so, I'm not saying Kanta is wrong. Kanta is is right. I mean, this could be used for many things. But then let have let's have more documents for those many things when we really want them. That's more the way I see it. Any other question on this document? 
Can we move to, to the other? Okay, let, let, me, let me open the next document then. Oh. <clears throat> okay, Alexander, so the, the, the floor is yours. Do you want to move the slides or do you want me to move the slides for you? Yeah. Yes, 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 it's, it will be better. Thank you. If you can uh, give me the hand. Thank you, Pascal. But okay. you're chairing the session okay. now, so no. you can so stop me at any time. Let me, let me give you the hand, and for that, I need to bring up. Give me a macro sec. Okay, you have the slides control. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, first of all, I would like to really thank Carles and uh, Sergio, uh, who are actually attending the meeting, uh, because uh, they actually started this this uh, work on chic streaming they published a draft which is now expired but i i am pretty confident they will uh, continue working on it and we'll share some new insights in the near future um uh, so i did actually a, a short review of the document uh and it seems fairly uh, it seems like an excellent start uh and the point is that i wanted to to share some um, uh some questions and some uh, some potential ways of, of development, um, uh, giving some specific use cases. So the goal here is to, oh, okay, yes. <laughs> um, the, the goal here is um, to use like the fragmentation fragmentation mechanism that's already existing in Chic in order to provide some form of reliability to, to the communications. Which is of course what, what we're already doing, right? Um, and and so th these are like two quotes from from the draft uh, of, from uh, Sergio and uh, Carlos. Carlos, uh, so Shiki does not provide optimal fragmentation uh, mode for a continuous transmission of unfrag of unfragmented Shiki packets. So that is the key point. Like they are small packets, um, and uh, and also the point is that sometimes you may want to use fragmentation for uh, uh, you don't want fragmentation, but you may want to have reliability. And so I'm, I'm going to go into a couple of examples, and, and just so that we get in into some kind of a easy terminology, I would say that like I'll call big packets a packet which cannot fit in one MTU, uh, in, like in, in the let's say layer two, or, or I mean if you can see it on different layers, but that's primarily for layer two. Um, so you get a packet, you compress it, and if you cannot fit it into a, one MTU, then, well, it, it's a big packet. And a small packet is, well, the one that you can, after compression, you can fit in one MTU. Uh, there's a small caveat here, and that's that sometimes uh, small packets can become big packets. Right? So if you have a very good radio conditions, maybe your MTU is bigger, so a lot of things fit in one MTU, and then when the radio conditions change, well, suddenly you will need to fragment. Um, so you have this to take into into consideration, um, but it, so sometimes it's really like you have very few bytes of data that you want to send, like a sensor that will send data, and that will always fit in one MTU. Um, it, it, so so it's always going to be a small packet. Um, so this is one thing that actually we have looked at and we have observed, and and sorry, there's a lot of text, but <laughs> I didn't have. I didn't take the time to really condense the whole thing, but it's fairly uh, self-descriptive. We have, like, if we look at Chic as providing, uh, the Chic layer as providing a, uh, a service, um, the, there is a difference in the reliability uh, uh, that, that we provide, so the service provided to big packets compared to small packets. So, I mean, if we use NOAC, that's a different story, but here I'm talking about um, AC, uh, AC always, AC on error, and, and other fragmentation modes that, that are using some kind of reliability, right? Um, because big packets, they get a very high rebel, uh, reliability. You know, you have the fragmentation with all the acknowledgements and everything there. So a big packet actually can get I, I, maybe not 100% uh, reliability, but like close to that. Small packets, on the other hand, like they are just, if depending on the layer two, of course, but in, in most cases, what we've seen is like, well, it's it's just, it's there's a probability of, of, of packet loss, packet error rate, 
and, and that's it. So the smaller packets, which uh, sometimes these can be the control packets, so which, which are actually the most important ones, uh, uh, they can be lost with a much higher probability. Um, and then that, that's some kind of a problem. Like it creates an asymmetry, at least. And one of the possible solutions is that <clears throat> you can create, a, for every packet that you send, be it big or small, you create a fragmentation session. So that, that will be quite wasteful, of course. Yes, Edgar, please. <clears throat> yes, uh, I was wondering, uh, because we have this tile concept, and uh, you could create a tile of the size that you wish, even uh, one byte. So then I'm wondering, I mean, if you want to have the uh, reliability, can you just set these tiles in that way so that basically you are activating fragmentation, but anyway, you are sending the packet uh, fully and then you still will get the reliability because you are using the tile concept uh, or uh, i'm mistaken here i don't know no no, no you're you're perfectly right here um and, and the whole the whole point is actually that <clears throat> and, and uh, as eric said well in fact udp versus tcp but the whole point here is that we can use the fragmentation in some clever way so that we uh, uh the different fragments can actually contain separate messages so until now, what we're using is, well, we have one, we, we start one fragmentation session per message. And if the message is only fits in one MTU, we still need to acknowledge in the end. Okay, and so what you want is separate the flows in certain ways. So it's saying that certain messages has a different uh, reliability needs than other. Uh, yes, so I'm, 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 I'm coming to that. Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay, but the, the, because the, I have been analyzing the same for the zero energy devices, so that in some cases, maybe you can get the full packet through, but still I would like to get the reliability for the, even mm. for the full packet that goes first. So then that's what I'm checking. Like if we use the fragmentation with this style concept, do you get it like that? So then my understanding is correct. I, I, I think so, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, Sergio? Yes? Uh, we cannot we cannot hear you. Hello? So there seems to be some problem. I'm I'm just going to move move on. Uh, and, and uh, you can ask a question on the chat if you want. So actually, I would like to talk. Uh, yes, so Sergio has a problem with the audio. So uh, actually, the, there's a real world use case for which I had in mind for, for quite some time. And when I saw the presentation from Carlos and Sergio, I was like, OK, well, that, that's something that we need to, to do here, right? So that real world use case is uh, water metering. So the point is that you have like a water meter. The water meter is battery powered and needs to be like alive for 15 years. So like it, it, the, the communication part is it, it's very important. Um, and the point is that you can have uh, like you need to send daily readings a couple of times per day, let's say six times per day. And the operator needs to provide some kind of uh, a quality of service, like a guaranteed service level agreement, let's say. And that is like, okay, I need to get at least four messages for the day. So I may, let, let, let's simplify, like I don't care which of the four messages, but I need to get four of the six messages. So from, from, from some kind of operational on, on system level mode, it, it's, it's complicated, right? Because either you need to, uh, every message separately, you need to make sure that it gets through and you acknowledge it and so forth, but that's wasteful energy. Or you need to repeat the messages to get something that statistically going is going to be like okay I have at least two thirds of the messages uh, that I receive. Um, and and so here the point is that you can have this streaming kind of way that or, or like a, you have a, a fragmentation some kind of fragmentation 
which um, like as long as you are sending messages, every message fits in. So these we are talking about small messages, right? Every message fits in a fragment, and it gets processed, of course. And you only request resending the the the, the isolated fragments if some certain threshold is not is not met. So um, I hope that the examples that I have are going to to be a little bit uh, more uh, illustrative. Um, and, and as I said, like a lot of the things that I'm saying here can be achieved with the uh, Schick streaming. Uh, yes, of course, Eric, um, no problem. Um, and with the Schick streaming uh, uh, draft. So, um, uh, anyway, yes, as I said, excellent approach where a new fragmentation mode, so that's the Schick streaming. Uh, it uses compound compound that and um, so the few of the uh, uh, of the following counters are needed to be to distinguish between separate chick packets like you have the d tag you have the window and the f and the frame in the um, the fragment counter so lot uh, lost fragments are retrieved um, you know whenever you lose and you can have a, like a steady mix flow of small and big packets so this fragmentation, strict chic streaming as defined, uh, you know, you can mix small and big packets and the compound that is used, right? So here I have a couple of questions, but probably I would say we need to discuss that later on in, in, in some of them, like how chic packets are the, uh, the limit, uh, are, are separated. I think that every D tag actually corresponds to a separate chic packet. I'm not completely sure. Um, and so small packet actually is every D tag. So one uh, one D tag and then one window inside and one F count, and big packets. You know, uh, a big packet corresponds to a D tag, and it can span uh, span multiple windows and counters. And there are a couple of questions here that I that I, I think that we, we need to discuss at some point. Is um, so what is the state machine of the D tags management, right? Uh, we we had a lot of discussions on when windows uh, roll over and, and 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 so forth when they wrap around and so forth, but you know we'll probably need to at some point to discuss how the D tags are going to to behave, right? Uh, uh, probably something that's quite evident and, and simple. Um, okay, so Sergio says the D tag is used for cycles, not per packet. Okay, then you need to to tell me a little bit more on how we actually separate the sheet packets, All right? Uh, uh, but, but but you know this is so that then that that's a third possibility. There there is a, a third possibility, right? Um, there are another implement several implementation points that are related to how we handle buffers on devices because you know buffer like, we have embedded devices a lot of the time. So if they need to cache things, um, it can probably become problematic if we don't put any limits on that. Uh, also, if we continue multiplying the fragmentation modes. Uh, and we do require a lot of these fragmentation modes to be present, that can be something that we probably should take care of. Um, so for example, in LoRa 1, now you have uh, certification for Chic over LoRa 1. And there you have like, in the certification there are tests and the tests are testing for NOAC, uh, ACC on error and, uh, and ACC always, right? So you actually need to have the three codes in, in the device. And so if we, Create set like multiple uh, uh, code points that could be, you know, we, it could lead somewhere, right? So we just need to take to think a little bit also about this. Um, and now one of the things is that, um, and and this this is like an idea that 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 uh, um, that I've been thinking of, is how can we have like a consistent QoS level across the different types of messages, right? And one of the things was let, let's say let's at least have one simple streaming mode or reliability mode only adapted to small packets. Um, and so here I uh, so I, I put a couple of, of diagrams that are please excuse me that if if you if you see uh, uh, some big errors can you see my pointer by the way my mouse. Not sure. No. Ah, okay. Um, ah. 
uh, timer, admin, share screens to video. No, okay, note taking tool. Okay, so don't want the note taking tool. Well, then it's going to be a little bit more uh, complicated to follow, but for example, you see the uh, so that we have an, uh, a packet A that's like a, uh, it comes from the um, ah, shit, sorry. No, okay. Let me reshare it. Okay. <clears throat> so let's say that we have um oh, okay, close. This so we have a application level packet that comes that contains the letter A. Let's, let's simplify. Oh, it goes through compression and like that. It's just here to to the limiter that it, it's there, and it, it it's like a small packet. And then it comes to the reliability fragmentation mode. So here I put it like acon error, but that it just to have something named there. So it can be the chic streaming, it can be whatever you want it like. And it's just a fragment, so it gets a fragment over to the other fragmentation, which is on the chic gateway. It's a small packet, and A gets delivered right, to the to the application. Then we have B sent by the application, it gets through the fragmentation, it gets delivered, and C again gets delivered. So here the, the point is that <clears throat> you have one only one fragmentation session, right? You it, it it's it's been going before that. So the, the chic uh, streaming draft actually addresses this how you open a session, how you close it. So it's been going for some time, and now you you're just sending three separate messages. They are treated as three fragmentation, so three fragments. And but they are sent directly, right? You don't have, you don't wait for the something to to be to be uh, 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 re refragmented or something like. They are sent directly to the upper layer. Now, what you can have is, of course, how do you react when there are losses? So here we have like D. Well, it's it, the, the fragment which which carries D is lost. You have E, it's lost, and then you have F. So F gets to the other side. And then you have, because you have a fragmentation, it takes, oh, I, I lost fragments. <coughs> Let's say fragments number uh, six, five, uh, six and five. So it says, hey, I lost fragments number six and five. So the same way that we, today we, we, do, we will do with fragments. And so the fragmenter will send these separate fragments and they are treated, okay, well, they, they are the packets uh, uh, D, E, and then F, of course, which was, which was cute uh, because that, that's, and, and here is also a thing we can have delivery discipline. Well, that's in order delivery. You send the packets in the, the small messages in the same order they are, they have been sent. But you, because these are isolated and separate messages, then you can have an out of order delivery, right? So you have A B C D E. So these are sent. F F goes through. Ah, uh, sorry. Actually, I. Uh... I, I uh, did a bad uh, copy paste. So F goes through and then it's sent uh, right away. And then um, uh, and then you, you, you have like a, a fragment lost and whenever they are received, it is uh, D and E that are uh, sent to the, um, that are sent to the, to the application. But you could also have, and, and this is the, the point where I was talking about reliability level. Uh, uh, or like a level of, of, of service, it is where actually the gateway or the, 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 the reliability, the, the fragmenter can say, hey, I have certain reliability level. I need to deliver four out of every six packets. So that's my reliability level. So as long as I am um, with that, I don't, I'm not going to send any, uh, uh, like I'm not going to send error, uh, error indication. So here we are at exactly the same picture as before. So D has been lost. E has been lost, but because F goes through, now we are like we are at the at the at the, uh, uh, um, at the service level that is acceptable. So there is no indication that hey there was an error. Like even though D and E were lost, well we don't care. Everything is okay. So we really we don't waste downlinks and we don't waste all, all, all that for for um, useless messages. Right? So here that the, the point here is that. This actually, this reliability level can be decided by the operator. So in some levels, in, in some 
cities or in, in some specific use cases, maybe two thirds of delivery of packet delivery rate is, is okay. In, in some other cases, like it needs to be higher or it can be lower. Um, and that's a thing that you configure on the Schick gateway, right? So it's in the network. So you can go and deploy as many devices as you want. And even though they're once deployable, you ju it's just a configuration option, right? Um, and also, here you can have things that are, um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, you can have several different fragmentations in parallel with different QoS. So someone can be like a, a reliability level of, well, there, like there, are, there is no minimum reliability. Every message is sent uh, uh, isolated. Uh, as we do today, and others are put in fragmentation with reliability level two thirds, and another with reliability level ninety five percent. And so you just have in the core network in the Schick gateway a counter that says, okay, well the level is okay or not, and if it if it gets below some a certain level, then it will request that, hey, well, please recover some of the fragments. Um, and here also an interesting part is that downlinks can intervene in different times, right? And that's uh, uh, something I mean we, we need to, to to look at. Not only at the end of a window, for example, it can be in between. Um, and if we add to this some kind of a fake code, I think that we can really, really, really get to a super efficient, almost no downlink uh, uh, use for uh, uh, a, gi a given uh, QoS of message delivery. And so here are uh, another couple of examples. So. Um, here it's an, like an out of order delivery where uh, the same thing like you have A, B, C, D, so A, B, C delivered, D and E are lost, F goes through, so we're at the good service level, so everything's okay. G and H are lost, and I goes through, but then like the, 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 the ratio of the of packet that are delivered is not good anymore. So the fragments, so there is like, a, okay, well, we need to request the fragments that contain the G and H uh, packet because E and F are old, or it can be we want all of them. And so there is a strategy here to be defined. And if we have out of order delivery, well, we send I through and then G and H. Um, and, uh, and even if the, the downlink is lost, well, here you can, you can see that, uh, that it, it works. And just as a final like taste of how it would work if we have some kind of uh, uh, forward error codes used uh, by XORing two, uh, two consecutive messages. So you have the device sending A and B, and then A XOR B, and then C and D, C XOR D. Right? So you need to take to, to receive in the core two out of every three messages in order to be able to recover 100% of, of everything, right? But you, even you can, there, you can say, well, I don't need 100% reliability. I only need two thirds of 75% uh, of delivery ratio. So we can combine these two and probably never get the need to have a downlink. So, in conclusion, is, uh, um, I, I really love the work from Schick Streaming. I think that it's very, uh, it touches upon a very important point if like, you have a device that sends small packets. Um, and the point is like, where do we go from there and uh, what kind of use cases other than that you have i really like uh, edgar what he said about the uh, the ambient like the, the the zero energy devices so do you have any other stuff on, on your mind like this and what do you think so that's what that's for me it's probably pretty dense as a presentation <laughs> If nobody speaks, uh, maybe I can. I I, I yes. believe this is very very promising. Um, I I have a few comments. One of them is you you mentioned fake at some point, <coughs> and so how do we mix that is is to be studied. And the other is we still have the possibility for packets which are not part of this quas, and that we still want to send, but we don't want to count them as being part of the quas quantities. Uh, we could send them without these fragmentation as normal packets, or, or maybe there is a need to, to 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 flag them. But it could be that there are some packets which don't count, which which you know. Uh, for instance, um, if there are debug information being sent, 
and uh, that's not part of the ROI um, uh, uh, of the guarantees for the service, uh, then they should not be counted. Just an example, debug information OEMs, they should not be counted in this. You just want to, to guarantee that the, the packets which are important for the business, which are mission critical, basically, those ones are counted. So we need to be able to differentiate them. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you, thank you very much, Pascal. Yes, a very scarce question in the comments, so we can discuss that later. But uh, what I don't understand is why do we need a D, a D tag to to this, and why can uh, we just have a large window and we say that we uh, in this window we have a bit that will be the next window or or something like this, not to to go to the D tag. So I actually, I mean, for, for, for me, the, the, the way I see it, like from a more far away level, we don't really need the use of DTAC. Um, if we say, well, there is a thing that's only for small messages, we don't even need compound DAC, you know? Um, and this allows for um, like a very, I mean, you have the windowing and all that, and the size of the window actually is going to, to determine how, 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 many, how many fragments back you can recover. You know, hmm. That's basically the thing. You have a stream of data, and if you have a very small window, then you'll not be able to recover too much. If you have a, a, a huge window, probably you can recover a lot. Okay. So that that's probably the only point. Um, and then it's uh, if we mix with, uh, like, if we are allow, if you allow to have big packets, like fragmented packets that are interleaved with the small packets, then it could be a little bit more touchy to to manage. Um, and also that your chaos level can be affected by that, right? Uh, but it, it, it's, it's something to, and you could use probably the D tag, like every packet can have a separate D tag, like uh, one, two, three, four, so A, B, C, D, each of them will have a D tag. Um, so so that, that's, that's a possibility. Mm. But, but as I said, I'm not really sure how the, the, the state machine of that works on, on yes, top I of the window where we, you know the state machine. I think it complexify a lot because, in fact, the tag is just a way to reproduce n times the same uh, fragmentation rule. So you can have in parallel several fragmentation. And I instead of uh, saying rule one, two, three, four, five, six, you say rule one, and then the D tag will tell you which instance is this. But uh, if we go deeper, I think we we have to inv investigate a lot to see how we can manage it. Okay. Well, I, I think, I mean, I, I sent a couple of questions on the mailing list as well, so probably we'll, we'll get the ball rolling, but I, I think that's um, uh, uh, an important point to, 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 to continue um, investigating. Thank you. So with this, I say that um, probably we can end our meeting today. So thank you very much. And, um, you know, answer on the mailing list and all the things that, that are that we discussed and see you in two weeks time. Bye. Perfect. See you all. And uh, then again, uh, Happy New Year to all. I'm looking forward to meeting you for real, but that won't probably be in, in Australia. You all take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. And Dominic, very nice seeing you here again. Bye. Thank all. You. you. Same here. Yes. <laughs> talk, to, talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Right.